Hello. What's he doing? You know, he was hungry yesterday. He had three meals, like proper three packets of food. Today, not one. Yeah. Although one of those packets of food was about three o'clock this morning. He actually woke me up to eat the cheek of it. <laughs> I got better things to do and I was I don't know what came over me. I was so tired last night. So tired I was. And I went to bed early. And he didn't want to go to bed early. He wanted to play. Oh, it's a bit warm in here. So he's got a little bone under the table, so he's, he's happy. Oh yeah, this is Let Me Boy To Sleep. Please only listen when you can <sighs> safely close your eyes. <sighs> <sighs> My name's Jar. Did I say my name? I do the introduction so many times. I forget what I said as soon as I said it. But there you go. If you don't know who I am yet, then you're never going to know, are you? Huh? Huh? Unless, of course, this is your first time listening, then hello. Welcome. This is number... What number is it? Number da, 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 1114. Let me boy to sleep. 7th of May 2024. So I record it today and tomorrow morning I will edit it and upload it and release it and all that stuff like I do normally. That's the process. And to remind you, that this coming Friday is another Q&A Friday. I know it's hard to believe. It's the excite. I can I can feel the excitement, the the energy, the ooh energy. Yeah. So I'm looking at the internet and I've got to be careful. I'm going to put a volume down because sometimes I accidentally press a video and it starts playing and like a YouTube video and stuff. So Yep. Uh, so what was I going to say? Yeah, so Friday I put a link well, I put a post on both my normal Facebook pages and my Jason's, whatever it's called, boring group. What's it called? Jason Newland's boring group. Not a great seller, am I? I don't, uh, considering I used to actually do sales for a living, I don't really sell myself, do I? Not really. Um, but I uh, want to say thank you to Emil for your PayPal gift today. Thank you very much. It came at perfect timing so I could get some groceries. It was like, wow, brilliant. So I've got food, got food in the cupboards. And there will soon be food in my big fat belly. Yum, 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 yum. So thank you for that. And... I don't know what else. What else is there? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, my website is letmebore.com. And it's basically my podcast website for the Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I've got two podcasts. One is the Let Me Bore You to Sleep one. And the other one is called Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply in brackets. Jason New Land. And there's a yellow image with hypnosis for sleeping deeply on it in blue and then my name in black writing 
so that's the the podcast that has uh, I was going to say all of my recordings but it's a lot of my recordings on there the ones that aren't just the let me bore you to sleep yeah so I have just got back a little while ago I realise what Finney just did he just he just had a, the bone yeah it was a palate cleanser so he's had that and now he's eating his dinner it's been there for a few hours he just didn't eat it and now he's eating it and sometimes I think oh, I can't leave it out because it's just can't you know it's been there for sort of like for three hours or something but then I remember some of the things that he eats off the floor when we're out and I think well he can't be that fussy not really he can't really be that fussy you know I've seen him well I don't even want to go through it but don't want to go into it but he's, I've seen him eat some gross things so I've already got a couple of questions sent to me for the Q&A Friday uh, you can send me a question via my email address jason newland at hotmail.co.uk so there's that as well and i will attempt to answer them on friday but i will record it friday and release it saturday morning early hours probably usually released by about six in the morning so yeah that's it that's the introduction done. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in the news today. I've not watched much television at all. I've been I've taken video out three times. And what I've been doing is I have been going through my subscribed podcast episodes the let me bore you to sleep ones and let me have a look right so here's what I've been doing this is the the start of me writing my book I figured I've got over a thousand well probably about 14 1400 hours probably of me talking about myself and about my life I know some of it is just complete silliness and some of it is just boring stuff you know like going for walks and food deliveries and such like but as I discovered today I do actually talk about parts of my life that I forget I've talked about so my plan at this point is to go through each and every recording. I've only done 13 so far, so it's quite a, a slow process. That's what I sound, I heard someone at the door. No, I'll put my phone on just in case because if someone rings, I need... I'm waiting for a delivery. I might get a delivery, I don't know, but just keeping the door, my phone on in case. Sometimes delivery drivers say phone, but. So I have done 13. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm doing here. Cause you know, I imagine if you get to read a book that someone's written, you possibly won't know what's gone into to the book, the process. Now, I've never written a book before. I have attempted it numerous occasions. Uh, I think the first time I tried to write a book was when I was about 12. Didn't go too well. I always seem to start off talking about superheroes. That's what I was interested in. I was like superpowers and things like that. So I started on number number three because the first two 
Let Me Bore You to Sleep were basically just relaxation sessions. It's only number three. I really started kind of talking a little bit about myself because at the time I didn't know what I was going to, well, I didn't know what I was doing. Some would argue, some may say, still doesn't know what he is doing. And you'd be correct. So I started at number three up to number 13. And what I did is I'm using ChatGTP four and they've updated it but without actually I don't know if that makes sense I just updated it so they've not brought chat GTP 4.5 or 5 out but they have improved the one that's already being used so I started off asking a question and I expanded on that question in order for me to try and get as much information out of the PDF file. Say it slowly. PDF file. Although I think PDF is, I think the F is actually file in that. So the PDF. But for some reason I want to say file. Like docu document file or Excel file. So what I've been doing, because I've already transcribed every single one of my let me bore you to sleep recordings so they're all transcribed they're all saved so what i've been doing uh, i've been uploading the pdf to chat g g t g p t did i say g t p g p t golf Oh my goodness, I've forgotten the phonetic alphabet. Alpha, golf, tango, golf, P. What's P? Patrick. I don't know, can't forget. Golf, Charlie, hotel, alpha, tango, golf, patrol, tango. Petrol, potty, I don't know, something. I forget what P is in. So, Alpha, Beta, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, <laughs> Hotel, HI, India, L, Lima. M. What's M? M. Because M and N sound the same on the phone. When someone says, oh, it's M, N. Like, what is it? N, N? No, no. M, M. M, M. No. N, N. M, N. N, M. Is it M, M? M, N. N, N. Or N, M. No. T. S <laughs> and so, so if Ma Morris minor is it minor and N is is it Nero I don't know Nero O Oscar P Papa Papa GPT Papa Papa M I P Q is Quebec R, Romeo, S, Sierra, T for Tango, U for, wow, it's not Umbrella, is it? Um, all I think Umbrella would be good. U, V, V is Vera. Is it Vera? Foxtrot. No, that's F. Vauxhall? Maybe Vauxhall. W is wonky? No. Willy? W. X. What could X be? <laughs> zero? Well, that doesn't make sense because zero is Z. X. 
X-ray, X-ray, X-ray. X, Y, Z, so Yankee, Zulu. What is U then? U uterus. Underbelly. Underboob. I don't know. I don't know what un use. U. U Bearing in mind, the last time I used a phonetic alphabet was like 10 years ago. So I think you can excuse me for not remembering every single one of them. Umbrella. Ella, 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 Ella. <laughs> oh, which happens to be the name of one of the ladies I met in Thailand. Ella. Found out later her name was not Ella, it was something else. And I said, oh, so she... Why did she change it to Ella? So they said, no, she changed it to a different name um, after she met you. She's still in hiding. Like, t jokes. Silly. Still in hiding. I, I, uh, yeah, she, apparently I've seen her on YouTube with a different name. Like, uh, before meeting me, that is. Ah, <sighs> Confusing. Yeah, I get confused using different names. I really would. I really would. Umbrella. Is it Umbrella? Universe. Unison. Unilever. Under. Why do I think it's under something? Underneath. Alpha. Bravo. Charlie. Delta. Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, K is Kilo, Lima, M, Moo Moo, no. Um, M. What's M? Minor. Morose. Mirror. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's Ma. Ma. Me. More. Ma. Ma, me, it has to be one of them, doesn't it? it? Has to be a ma, 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 mo, mo, mu, mu, minor. Maybe it's minor. A L N minor. An N. Not n -n. nappy. No. Nana, no, that wouldn't be right. Nana, five for a pound. Nana's, taters, tatties. F five for a pound, tatties. And nana's, have a nana, have a tatty. So I just went back in time when I had a job on a, a market store. I I remember when I moved to London. There was big issue sellers. They're not big issue sellers. Um, Evening Standard sellers and they used to sell the evening standard it was like 50 pence or something a pound or 50 pence it was a big old paper it was really popular people used to buy them and read them on the trains basically uh, and it's they'd be outside every train station in london and eventually they started giving it away for free I think that was after the internet was invented. Never really kind of understood it because I used to quite like I used to buy it. When they gave it away for free, it's like, well, I don't want it now. Because to be fair, it was just full of adverts. That's the only way they could afford to give it away for free is by filling it with adverts. But that was a long time ago, so it might have changed now. I'm sure it's got no adverts and it's it's wonderful. 
I don't know, it's still available. I don't know if it's still around, is it? The Evening Standard? However, the reason I mentioned it is because the sellers, you hear them go, <laughs> Now they're saying Evening Standard. Everybody that's walking past knows that they're shouting Evening Standard. But what you hear is, <laughs> now, I always thought it'd be so good to, do you know those time, time stop cameras that film a plant growing over, you know, like a month? How good would it be to watch someone from the very first day that they sell the Evening Standard back in 1952 or whatever till today and seeing how they started out and hearing how the sound has changed from the very first day when it was, oh, good evening, everybody. Would you like to purchase a copy of the Evening Standard to... Now, anyone that has ever been outside a train station in London, we say you'll you understand what I'm saying. I mean, sometimes you will hear the remnants of the word "standard." It might be "ah." But there's no words, and they can talk. It's it's, not, it's just they've said it so often that they no longer hear themselves. I don't think it's an automatic. And the thing is, they've got these big signs, and everyone knows where they are, and you know, got a huge stack of even standards. Although, to be fair, now. I just remembered they're now free, so I don't think they even have... They might not have people giving them away anymore. Yeah, so even the standard sellers might not be a thing anymore. Because I don't live in London, so I don't know. I've not lived in London for 20 years. So I don't know what it's like now. Oh, wow. So, but anyone that remembers will remember that. <laughs> And you know, oh, Evening Standard. I better get, any, better get myself a copy of the Evening Standard to read. Because, you know, you might be talking to someone on a on the phone. Because mobile phones were around when Evening Standard was still, you know, available to buy. You should be talking to someone and saying, oh, yeah, I'm just, just getting a coffee outside Liverpool Street Station. As opposed to inside inside the station get a coffee outside it's a nice day yeah oh my train's here I've got to go I'm sure there's something I've forgotten a person on the phone is saying oh, you're always forgetting things you are so yeah that, that helps how, how does that help hey hey mum how, how does that help you hung up the phone um, and then you chuck the phone in the bin and you're like oh what have I forgotten and then you hear mm -hmm. It's like, oh, the evening standard. It's like, so you go and get your evening standard. It's like, you're right then. It's like, they say, yes, thanks, you're good. And you think, oh, I want to go. What? I was going to get something to read. What was it? And you hear, it's like, oh, it's, it's a sandwich place. It's a sandwich <laughs> shop. <laughs> Just getting silly. <laughs> Anything? Oh, the sandwich. I don't get. Should I get a sandwich? That's. And you're like, nye, 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 a baguette. It's like, oh, well, baguettes. I'm gonna get a baguette. I'm gonna get a baguette. So you go and get a baguette. So it's it's quite good. But then you get down and you think, oh no, which platform is my train on? And you hear the person on the phone on the. The what do they call it? You know the loudspeaker thing, saying. I was a long time. I was going to think, oh, you'll be saying, it's five past seven. It's like, oh, okay, right. 
so it's running a little bit late so that's that's good it's it's weird you get used to these sounds that aren't really language anymore it's amazing but when you think about it all language is just a bunch of sounds that doesn't really make sense if you don't know what it is <laughs> which is pretty much everything isn't it but it's just a, it's a bunch of sounds about a bunch of noises and you know if you hear someone speaking in a foreign language regardless of who they are if you don't know the language so if you're listening to an english person you've not and you don't speak english it's just a bunch of sounds you know you say if you were chinese for example and you and you see a group of english tourists in i don't know tiananmen square or just like having a little wander around or something i don't know and <laughs> avoiding the tanks no i shouldn't have said that sorry and um i and then you'd be hear them going what in fella you what here yeah oh this is really good it's brilliant china's huge there's so many beautiful buildings and the food's great the people are friendly it's wonderful and like all these then but the, if you're chinese you're looking at me thinking all you hear is yeah yeah mm, mcdonald's yeah we are tall everyone's short it's like gobbledygook literally it's like how how can they even understand each other so it must be like that for everyone i imagine see it's much better if i do it from that angle rather than me saying i'm sitting on a tube station and these foreigners get on um yeah no <laughs> no it's it does so i always find it funny but some people get like oh you can't say that but i think it from different angles you hear someone speaking a different language it sounds funny not in a, a rude way just it sounds like what are they saying how do they know what they're saying there's no wonder there's so much conflict in the world because no one understands what she's ever and no one understands what what each other's saying i'll get the sentence out in a minute i mean there's so much even the english language the english language there's so many little idiosyncrasies and if you say the same sentence in a slightly different way it can be the difference between having someone feel really good inside or having them not feeling so very wonderful you know take it from a compliment to an insult the same words or the same words delivered in the same way but okay for example i'll give you an example even the um, um okay uh you look really oh that you look really pretty in your new dress or you look really pretty in your new dress mm. yeah it's the same words to me it's it's the same it's the same it sounds exactly the same but um i'd never say to someone who looked pretty in their new dress it sounds does anyone say stuff like that i don't know maybe I've, i don't know anyone with a new dress but even sometimes if you if you say it nicely but then your physical actions are wrong and you get in trouble that way you know it's like oh Oh, thank you. That 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 was the best Sunday lunch I've had. The best Sunday lunch I've had in years. <laughs> it's it's like you know, it's like people take things the wrong way. It's you know, or if you're like, oh, that was that that food that was delicious. Where's the toilet? And you know, it's it's just it, it's people take things in their own way and it's hard to for me i find it hard to really 
relates to some communication and I've been taken wrong quite a few times in the past um, I remember this this I think she was a, a girl at work I say girl she was very young I was very young we were both teenagers in a factory and she said um, she's been really bit 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 you know towards some bloke that was chatting her up he came and sort of said hello to her so this bloke last night and he was chatting me up but I didn't want him didn't want him talking to me but he was telling me how pretty I was and I thought well I, I, I didn't realise I said it out loud I said was he drunk she took that as an insult now bearing in mind she was in a nightclub it's hard to find a sober person in a nightclub you know generally so you know it wasn't a it was more I wasn't quite <laughs> I wasn't saying that he'd have to be drunk to find her attractive what I was trying to point out is that maybe he was a little bit more free um a bit more uh, braver to approach her having been lubricated lubricated uh, that's probably not the right word uh you know um his inhibitions were reduced somewhat now I was probably 19 at the time so I didn't I didn't have, the, or maybe 18, I didn't have those words really to kind of uh, produce when I needed them. Um, another thing I did, and it was re it's really, and I felt bad, bad, really bad. I was 15, so bear in mind I was 15, but I remember it because I upset someone and I felt really bad for doing it. And so I'm not telling you this so to me. As a, as a joke, this is kind of serious. Not serious, but I was a kid. And I was 15 and a half years old. Just started working in a chip shop. And there was a lady there. Um, called whatever her name was. I don't want to say her name. I do remember her name, which is weird. Uh, let's, let's call it Tracy. That wasn't her name, Tracy. And... She was always moaning, always moaning, moan, 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 all like constantly. And she was fairly elderly, uh, to be fair. Thinking about it, she probably was no older than I am now, but she seemed like she was about 80. To me, she seemed very quite old, like she was in her 80s or something. She might have been probably in her 60s, but possibly even younger than I am now. Because 40 was old back then. And she had a couple of teeth missing, which is fine. I don't care about stuff like that. I know plenty of people with teeth missing. I've got teeth missing, but they're just, they're not at the front. I've only got, I mean, it, you see me talk, it looks like I've got a full mouth of teeth. I've only got four teeth. They're just, luckily, they're just the front ones. So I just don't my mouth a little bit. So it looks like I've got all my teeth. Um, so she's, anyway, they got a new broom. You might think, oh, it's a story about a broom. Why is he talking about a broom now? Uh, here we go. So the old broom broke. And this is like a broom, you know, with bristles, you stick a stick on the end of it, a handle, all that, and then you have to basically, I think sometimes you can get the ones that screw in which I think is a much better idea than having to hammer a nail into it. It just makes sense to have one that's that you can screw in. It just makes just seems to make it's obvious to me, but hey, what do I know? So what I did is it was new, it was in the plastic, I took it out of the plastic and I said to everyone, Oi, look at me. Look, look, look at this. Tracy's toothbrush and I'm brushing my teeth with this thing and everyone's laughing except her and honestly I felt bad uh, you know I just I, I apologised to her I really did and I made um, 
peace with her and I think I can't remember but I definitely apologize and I did feel bad because I had no intention I didn't know she was there I didn't know she could hear me but that's not an excuse because I've had people do that stuff to me and it's not nice you know you know so I wouldn't have done it and it's something I would never I, would, um, I don't think no I would never do that now today I'm not really into I make fun of myself that's my thing is making fun of myself I'm not really into making fun of other people not publicly um, yeah I, I mean me and my friend Luke the one who passed away we used to make fun of we used to have a laugh but it was just, it was friendly it was between me and him and we'd have nicknames for people and stuff like that but it was it was kind of childish really it was like being at school <laughs> we literally had nicknames for people that worked in the shop the neighbours the, the it's like the market store bloke there's all these different people that we had nicknames for and we just use them <laughs> and, it, and it's no one would know who we were talking about if there was anyone else around um, yeah man I miss him oh well so I I apologise to her the thing is it probably didn't make it any good because if I <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking back at what an absolute moron I was back then um, and last week and probably earlier today but back then specifically I think if I hadn't made a makeshift stage in front of the shop so that all the customers could see and there was a stage light and a microphone maybe if I hadn't done all that it wouldn't I mean if I hadn't dressed up as a magician you know maybe it would have wouldn't have been quite so bad um hiring a piano player uh, probably was a bit over top, over the top, but it just and I like I did apologize, said sorry. The thing is, I tell you what it was, she was rude to me from the time I started. She was horrible to me, so I kind of didn't respect her. But at the same time, I just I hated the yeah, the idea that I'd upset her really it really actually got to me it's still the fact that i still remember it now 100 years later and i'd like to say i've never repeated that process i've probably done other versions of that without meaning to i think there's been times i've messed up um there was this one time I was sitting down in work, another workplace, drinking coffee and um, someone was talking and I said something and he replied and I said, oh, um, I can't remember what he said, but all I said was, and he walked out and uh, I made a joke. And he made a joke, okay? And it was like an innu innuendo joke and it was funny and it, or whatever. And then I said, oh, I'm glad I didn't mention his mum. And everyone laughed. Apart from one bloke who said, that, that's my brother. That's, <laughs> that was my brother. You know, this is my mum you're talking about. Ooh, I didn't know that there was two brothers working. And they were working on the, the loading lorries and stuff. And I really thought, oh, 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 am I going to get out of this building <laughs> today? I apologised to him. I said, look, in the end, I apologised outside. I went up to him and said, look, well, to be fair, I'm not waiting all day to see whether or not they're going to be waiting for me. Because they weren't going to do anything there and then because they wouldn't want to lose their jobs. But I said, look, I'm sorry, man. I didn't, it was a joke, I didn't mean it like your mum just, it was just a flippant, and he said, oh, don't worry about it, and I was like, whoa, 
because I thought like, the two of them on that just be uh, just the idea of them pounding me. I <laughs> see words, words. It sounds different, doesn't it? It's like we do you, you pounding you. Yeah, you know, like p- punching. I don't anyway. So I'm trying to think what other things I've done that I shouldn't have done. Oh, there is this. My boss, the, the the machine, the ticket machine. So I used to put stickers on bits of meat and stuff like that. That's what was my job for a while. And the machine wasn't working. So it was a Saturday morning. I asked for the the boss to, to come and have a look at the machine. The big boss, because it was, there was only a small amount of people working there. He came and said, oh, the, the machine's all right. Because as it does, if, you, if someone comes to look... It'll work fine while they're there, and then it'll stop working again as soon as they've gone. That seems to be the way the world way the world works for some reason. And um, Arthur was the team leader who was he was just horrible to everyone. He wasn't there that day, but he was me and him had a ongoing feud. So I said to my boss, the nice boss, I said, I said I'm trying to explain to you, it wasn't. Honestly, it's been playing up. I'm not just pulling your, yanking your chain. It really is playing up. And he said, well, it's fine. I said, I was like talking to Arthur. He had the biggest go at me in the world. Honestly, he was shouting at me. Don't you dare compare me to him. <laughs> Again, I had to apologize there and also later on. We kissed and made up. It was fine. Yeah, I've got into trouble a few times. I used to, when I was younger, I used to say things. It's like I didn't seem to have control over what I said. Things used to blur out of my mouth. And I don't know why. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Is and also, I mean, even now, but I, back then, I never knew what mood I was going to be in. I never knew. I'd walk to walk to work, and I'd feel absolutely fine. I'd wake up, have my breakfast, and all that stuff. Go to work, and I would get there, and I realised that, that I didn't like anybody. <laughs> I did not want to talk to anybody, did not want to be near anyone, did not want to hear anyone's voice. And that was just the way I was feeling. I didn't know why I was feeling that way. It's very strange. In other days, I'd be like really bubbly and excitable. Very strange. But what was weird, well, I don't know if it's weird... Anyone I worked with always ended up liking me, usually. Even people that really didn't like me to start with, they came around. I wore them down. I wore them down. I think I did. I mean, I remember one bloke, he was, God, he was, I think he was probably in his 40s, late 40s then. And this was 91. And he was working on a different machine to me the same machine but he was working the other side of the room and he kept shouting stuff out of me like verbal abuse for some reason he was a drunkard I mean he was complete you know drinker before work because they, they, they used to be this thing called the early house in London they might have them in other parts of the country or they might have had them in the other parts of the country as well, other cities and stuff, maybe towns, I don't know. I've not lived everywhere. But in London, you could go to the pub early hours. And I don't think it was legal. I don't think it was, they were legally allowed to open, but they did. And I think you get a lot of people maybe that were working night shifts would go there. Uh, so they'd finish their night shift at six or five and they'd go to the early house. Because that was their evening. 
So they go and have some drinks and then go home about maybe eight in the morning and go to bed. A lot of people would go there in the morning before work. I say a lot. Quite a few people I worked with did. Because I worked with quite a few, quite a few serious drinkers. The one bloke, very popular, they called him Snuffles. So he used to sniff um, tobacco. He was very popular. Everyone really liked him. He was a lovely bloke. For the first part of the day. And then he got ready. Until first break. No, till, till lunchtime. And he'd go to the pub. And he'd come back. And he'd be in a really good mood. And he'd start getting a little bit ratty. You know near the end, middle of the afternoon and then, you know, he'd go I didn't know what he did I guess he went to the pub after work well I didn't really know I thought, oh he had, must have had a couple of drinks I went to the pub with him there was a few of us so I just went to the pub because there was a pub around the corner from where we worked and I swear I've never seen anyone drink so much in such a short period of time he must have done he must have done at least five pints and maybe a couple of shots in that time the first two pints he just drunk them down like gulp just like all the way down and another one all the way down and he got another it's like wow but first of all how did he afford it how could he afford to drink that much that's even back then, I mean, it was probably a pound a pint, maybe more. So he was getting, you know, that's costing him five, six, seven pound, even at really small amounts. He's paying like seven, eight pound for a lunch. That's without eating. He used to bring sandwiches in, so he'd have them at break time, first break. And one day he he got sacked because they found him sleeping in the cupboard. <laughs> he, was a, he was having an afternoon nap. And apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, I can't remember if I might be making part of this up, but they were doing an inspect, well, not an inspection, but the, the big bosses were coming around showing prospective clients because this was a big frozen depot where they used to store frozen stuff, um, hence the frozen, I guess, bit. The huge, huge storage units, like massive, really quite famous in East London. It was, and they were sh they, every now and then they'd show prospective clients from other countries and be come round to see how we do all the different bit, bits and bobs, the processing, the storage, the all that stuff. So they had this group of people and they all had little white hats on and white coats and um, covers on their shoes because we used to have blue covers on our shoes after, yeah, by then there would be, uh, didn't used to in the, in the late 80s when I started working in 89. Don't think we had covers on our shoes, but by about 92 they did. 93, 90, 92, something like that. Well, 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 well. So they were showing these people, I think they were, um, well, they were from a different country, I don't know where, and they were, they were like probably quite important people in their company were being shown around. And he's like, well, there's a machine there, machine there, and pull back the cup, the curtain. It's in this cupboard, it's where we keep all the, the labels the box of labels that we put onto the machines and he was just there let us asleep snoring on the label boxes he was just like fast asleep so they had no choice but to sack him and they probably wouldn't have sacked him in fact i think they knew that he went for a sleep they just didn't realize he was asleep then um so he wouldn't have got sacked if the bosses had just caught him I got told off but they like everyone liked him he was one of these really likable people everyone enjoyed being around him they found him funny and he was 
he was just nice, nice person, kind of. I remember I saw him on a Sunday once, and he he was dressed in his best, proper Sunday suit, and he was going to the pub, and he was just proper old-fashioned in that way, you know? I mean, back then, I guess he was in his 40s, I'd say. Maybe 50s, but I'd say 40s, not 50s. And this is nice, so what's that? It'd be 70, in his 70s now. And he was just friendly. Friend, a friendly bloke, because at that time, this, no, this, is back, this is 89, and I'd moved in with Jim, and Jim, talking about Arthur, Arthur gave Jim some meat to take home. There you go, take, you can take that. Security checked Jim, searched him, found the meat, and Jim got sacked. Well, he got arrested, not just sacked, he got arrested. And Arthur didn't say nothing. Now, he wasn't even, at this time, he wasn't even a supervisor, Arthur wasn't. He was just kind of... Um, uh, what do they call it? What's that right word? He's always trying to get in the good books for the bosses. And these two were friends. Like, been friends for decades. You know, because Arthur was in his 50s. Jim was probably in his 50s or late 40s. Jim was in, you know, about the same kind of age. And at that time, I was living with Jim. Did I? No. Did I? I can't remember if I moved in before or after that. I must have moved in before that because I was working with him. And I was getting fed up where I was living because it was just so noisy. And and he offered me, he said, well, you can, You've, he had a flat council flat and it's one of the old fashioned council flats in London that were big big flat, a big flat, big living room, big kitchen, bathroom two bedrooms I never went into his bedroom but I went into mine because that's where I slept um, but it was a big room, it was nice so I, I, I moved in there I still had my other room because there was still like two weeks left on the rent so I thought, well, I'll tell the landlord when I see him. You know, I'll put the keys through the door when the two weeks are up. Otherwise, he'll want me to pay a deposit or... Uh, I don't know. I can't remember my thinking because I was... It's a long time ago. So I moved into this, this room. I was in there for a few weeks. Maybe a month, maybe... Blimey. It might be in the beginning of 1990, like January time. And I think his girlfriend worked in the, she worked in the laundrette. And she was really, really short. But I got, I, I got on her right over. Got on over. I'm not saying being short is an issue. I'm just, just remember, because he was... He was quite a bit taller than her. Not this, I don't know why. I'm just. I'll give you a description of him if you want. So his name is Jim. That was his real name. Um, he. He was from from. I don't know where he was from. I think it might be Mauritius, but he was he was a Muslim. So he's from a kind of a a Muslim country, or the, the, this majority of the Muslim. And I, at the time, I, I knew a little bit about religion, but he, he was definitely had gone off the rails regarding the religion, because he was drinking. But he just lost his job. He'd just been arrested, and he was facing, not, not going to prison, but he was facing, you know, a, tr 
I don't know if if it was a trial or he was facing something. And you know, it wasn't just was it was a it left a bad taste really. And so I was living there. He was really upset, and he was this bloke was lovely. I still remember his face. He was really friendly. Not just he was friendly sober. He was friendly when he was drinking. He's always like cause he used to like brandy, and he'd like be drinking. He's like, "Come on, Jason, come and have a have a brandy with me." And uh, I said, "No." I'd go and say hello. I wouldn't like just run off. I'd I'd go into the living room and his girlfriend would be there. She had her own flat as well, and the living room was big. And I'd just have a chat with him, and he was lovely. He's a really really nice bloke. Because trust me, I would not have moved into a flat with someone that I didn't like. Because I didn't need to. I had somewhere to live. But he was just nice. Nice man. And it was nice to know I could help him out as well. Because rent would have come in handy. Now, now he'd lost his job. So I think he, he was going to get some more work. But he went downhill. And... After a few weeks, he he passed away. So he, I think he basically drunk himself, had too much to drink, and he. It's weird, but it was. Yeah, I was living with him when it happened. Not, I, I was living with him when when it happened. Yeah, not when it happened. But I came home from work and was told by his girlfriend. And I remember that day. It was windy, really, really windy. It was, I think it was January, and it was one of those winds where you turn a corner and it and it's windy. I guess I don't know. I'm trying to explain. It was windy. You know, a windy day is, but really windy, where like um, I don't know. You know, the, what do they call them? Do you know, the thing, the things that is they shutters that or that come out from shops. You know, and they. You can stop you from you can stand under them when it's raining. A couple of those have blown off. I don't mean farted, I mean blown off as in by the wind. And I remember that. And I got some dust in my eye. And I thought, oh but I didn't like this. So I went indoors and she greeted me. And it was like, oh, it freaked me out so much I moved back into my other place straight away moved back into the room I had because I just didn't know what to do and it turned out the police were looking for me because because I'd run off they're like what, what's happened this is un- weird circumstances or something You're like what but it wasn't it's um I wasn't hard to find. I was working at a place that he'd worked at, so she knew where I worked, and you know, so it's fine. But it was strange. But it was so nice, and I remember being in that room and for the first time in years. I felt relaxed. Really felt relaxed. The the living room was way up the other corridor bit, so I couldn't really hear anything going on there. I had my television on. I was watching Dallas. And that's when it had... uh, What's his name? J.R. Ewing's son. The adult son that he discovered. And then he got together with J.R. Ewing's young wife. And I think... I don't know. Didn't they end up getting J.R. Ewing put into um, an asylum thing? And it was just, it was, I loved it. Just loved it. I also had a job, an evening job, selling, I had two, two canvassing jobs during that period. One was selling life insurance. So I was walking around the London streets, knocking on people's doors, trying to get people interested in life insurance. And the other one was was for oh Sky. 
and my job with that one was canvassing again, knocking on people's doors, offering people the chance to have a sky dish completely free for, I don't know, six weeks, something like that, three months. And then if they didn't want it, if they didn't like it, then they could just give it back. And if they did want it, then they could sign a contract and, you know, pay, pay monthly. And that is in sales terms called the puppy dog sales trick. And it's uh, basically if you give the, the idea is this. If you give someone a puppy. And you let them keep that puppy for a couple of weeks. Or a month. You're not going to get that puppy back. They're not going to want to give that puppy back. Because they'll fall in love with the puppy. You know, it's just a standard thing. Uh, it doesn't take a month, but, you know. And that is how they worked, that one. So people who have the satellite dish, that ha suddenly have all these channels. Because at the time, at the time, all we had in the UK of England was four channels. BBC One, BBC Two, ITV and Channel Four. That was it. We had radio sh radio channels as well. So I don't know how many channels Sky had when it opened, but it it must have been amazing to have all these new channels available, just to have some options, you know. So at the time, I didn't see what a great opportunity was it was for me, because. If I'd have done that full time, if I'd have just jacked in the other job and said, that's it, I'm going to do, I'm going to knock on people's doors all day long, every day, giving away these free satellite dishes, you know, for three months. I reckon I'd have made quite a bit of money. If I just stuck at it, I only did it for a couple of days and I just thought, nah. It was cold, it was wet, damp. I guess wet and damp is the same thing, but yeah, it's foggy. It was, you know, icy. It was winter. Basically, if I just said winter, I didn't have to kind of add all the different versions of the weather, did I really? It was winter. And... Yeah, that was an opportunity I could have really took. And that would have been good. Oh, just dropped something on the floor. Uh. Oh, yeah, I just remember that. It was weird. I don't know why I'm thinking of that place, but it was, I, I, yeah, life insurance. Was it life insurance or home insurance? I think it was life insurance. Which is weird because I didn't know anything about it. It might have been a case of getting a quote, get, um, getting a a name and a telephone number, and then getting a salesperson to call, something like that, probably. Yeah, like it was when I did the double glazing canvassing previous to that, and again in nineteen eighty nine. That was my uh, canvassing year. I was good at that. Yeah, I was. So, no one believes me. I was good at something once. For a short period of time. That was kind of the best summer I ever had. Kind of. It was the only summer... It was the first summer... Since leaving school... That I could actually have any fun because the first year I left school I was 15 I had no money I had a little bit of money but I was 50 yeah I was yeah I did have I was getting paid 60 pound a week in a chip shop until September when it went down to 27 pound a week because I was on the YTS scheme which is just imagine getting Less than half your wages. For doing the same work. It's like wow. 
So I, in the end, I, I gave, uh, so I had money for a few months and I bought some clothes and I bought some shoes and first thing I bought was a sword, samurai sword. And then, yeah, I, I dressed, I made, got some fairly decent clothes um, because the bloke, the kid that, well, he was a kid, he was 14, I think, or 15, 14, and he was a really snazzy dresser and he took me clothes um, shopping because I had the money coming in 60 quid a week, which was enough to get some shirts and stuff like that. But I was sleeping on a camper bed in the living room of my stepmom's mother. So, you know, I didn't really enjoy the summer because I was living there all the way through until the following... By the time I turned 16, yeah, I moved into my own flat, which was... Easter time which was above the chip shop and then I had no money that summer either because I was earning £27 a week and then the following year the following summer I had no money because I was pretty much unemployed because I left the I left the co-op job because I had this job in the co-op from April till about June, July maybe and then from July till probably September or June till September I didn't have a job, I just did some part time work, cleaning jobs and things like that just to get by I didn't have any rent to pay because we were being evicted so we had like two months or th whatever eviction notice and I got a job just in time in a factory but that summer was gone. So I didn't really get to enjoy that summer. That was 88. 89. I. Yeah 89 I started off working in. 89. 88, 89. Yeah I left that job. So I worked from September. It's really weird. I didn't stay there for long. Or maybe August. I might have started in August. Because I had to be 18 to get the job. So I probably applied as soon as I was... As, I was, as soon as I was, as I was 18. Um, till about December. Which is really weird because that doesn't make sense to me. 88... 89, wow, I had so many jobs in such a short period of time, so, oh anyway, I, but regardless of all the different jobs I had, in the summer of 89, because I can't even remember what I was doing, but then I applied for this canvassing job, and uh, spoke to the bloke on the phone, he said, yes, turn up. And I thought, oh. And I remember walking, because I didn't know what canvassing was, really. I knew it was like knocking on people's doors. And I thought, that doesn't sound very appealing. In the evening, it doesn't sound very appealing. But it was, you know, it was money. And it was only four hours a day. And I thought, that sounds appealing. So I... I tossed and turned and awed and heard and all that stuff. And I remember I was walking. I remember specifically there was a part, like on the cliffs of where I lived, there was a a part which is high above the sea level, high above the beach. And I was just looking over and thinking, shall I, shall I take the job? Shall I not take the job? Shall I just, shall I do something else? I don't know. And in, in the end, I just decided to go for it. And this is on the day of it. I just turned up in the end. I think I turned up all dishevelled because I wasn't ready. But I kind of forced myself to go. And it turned out that I was... It wasn't too difficult for me to just 
talk to people as much as I thought because there was a reason for it there was a point to the conversation there was a reason to talk to people and to knock on the door I wasn't just having a conversation I wasn't at a party a party and randomly talking to strangers about nothing and this was like I was knocking on the door I was apologising for interrupting them and I was there to ask them if they needed or considered having any new windows or double glazing or new front doors or back doors or conservatories or chimneys or I don't know whatever else the lawn mowed whatever and uh, and that was it so it was a purpose for what I was doing and it was people were giving me details it was getting leads and some of those leads were selling so I was getting paid the basic I was getting paid for every lead where the salesperson actually got in the door so that we didn't just write down numbers you know people's addresses because people had done that in the past apparently just writing down addresses and he came back after walking around for like an hour with 20 addresses yeah this person what's their name oh I forgot to write their name what's the telephone number oh I forgot to write the telephone number but I've got the address well yeah it's easy to get an address just by walking past the house um, but you know I'd have the telephone number I suppose nowadays there'd be a mobile phone number because they weren't around back then there'd be an email address maybe as well and I'd also get paid if there was a sale and I think the most I got paid I think one week I got paid I'm sure I got paid a hundred, at least £200 one week during the summer now £200 was a fortune to me and I was paying probably £30 a week rent and you know really other than food I didn't have any expenses just living you know deodorant and soap and you know those bits and bobs so it was a good summer I was getting paid we were winning contests where I was getting we were all getting crates of champagne and as a team because we were a good team together and I suppose the word together wasn't really needed because team is a bunch of people isn't it why am I judging myself I don't understand it why do I do that so that was quite a good summer I had a girlfriend I had a girlfriend and uh, she was a friend of the daughter who lived in the house that I was lodging with and yeah she lived in the next town so I used to go up there and hang out with her stay at her place sometimes with her family they all welcomed me in we used to go out together and stuff so that's quite cool and I was reading sales books I was I didn't watch television the whole of that summer didn't have a television in my room and I watched videos I had uh, comedy videos which uh, I had a like, big bunch of them like stand up so I, I'd watch a comedy video downstairs in the living room if there's no one around but I didn't watch any television for the whole of that summer until probably the end of the yeah end of the summer so all through the summer bit I didn't watch television I remember I used to get up and go to a cafe. I'd have my breakfast, I think. Yeah, I'd have my breakfast, like breakfast cereal or whatever. And then I'd go to this local cafe that was around the corner from where I lived. And I'd have a cooked dinner every lunchtime. And I was kind of like their regular customer. They only just opened and... I was like telling people about us, trying to spread the word a bit. 
And yeah, because other people, some people would come in and they'd look around, make sure I wasn't there. And then they'd come in and have some, have something to eat. Sometimes they'd phone up and say, uh, it's Jason now. They said, no. So oh, well, I'll be there in a minute. So I don't know what that was about. So it was nice because I was eating properly. Like I say properly, it wasn't. Yeah, it was quite food, food, not um, wasn't chips and burgers and sausages and stuff. It was actually a cooked meal, which is, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. Probably not a roast dinner, but maybe sometimes lasagna or shepherd's pie or, you know, those kinds of things. And I was doing that every day and then in the evening, <laughs> I, was, I was going about eating healthily and then in the evening I'll have a pizza so perhaps it wasn't that healthy and some beers maybe uh so yeah i was drinking a fair bit back then not a lot but you know just enjoying the summer and it was weird because i remember i came out of the petrol station which was just across the road from where i lived that's quite a new petrol station as well things were picking up in that town in that year everything seemed to be going quite well I'd be on the beach during the day uh, walking around with my bottle of champagne with my friends just hanging around just not causing trouble just just having a laugh you know so my, a couple of old school buddies um, yeah blimey I met a met a girl or a woman or whatever in um in the laundrette, and I really we really got on right. We clicked, got on really well. She's probably same kind of age as me, maybe a little bit older. She's probably what was I eighteen? So she might have been nineteen, twenty. I don't know. She might have been eighteen. I I don't know. I really don't know. But she was working in a cafe, so I said I'll come and see her. Cause it was a different cafe, not the one that I was working at. But it was like a tea room on the on the on the near the beach. So I went <laughs> I went in there. Just I just go in there every now and then, just say hello, you right? And just because we spent like two hours chatting to each other, so we got to know each other a little bit, you know. And she was nice, and I did think, oh, hmm, hmm. The thing is, I was a little bit probably a little bit tipsy well I came out of there and some bloke came up to me and said that's my girlfriend and I was like yeah so keep away from her it didn't actually go but I'm just giving you an example and I just laughed at him I was like I just, just didn't know what to say really because it just seemed so silly. And I was like, okay. And I did, because, you know, I didn't know she had a boyfriend. If I'd known she had a boyfriend, in fact, I think I went back in and apologised to her. So I don't know if that annoyed him as well. But I did, I did say, sorry, I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I think I might have done. Sounds like something I would have done. Uh, yeah, possibly. But I think the bloke had a bit of an issue with me because he used to come into the co-op when I worked in a co-op and um, I think I might be a little bit rude to his mum. No, <laughs> you've got a thing about being rude to mums, haven't you? No, it was just... I... Basically... I was 17, okay? Kind of just, just pointing it out. So I'm I'm not 15 anymore, but I'm still 17. Still, you know, some would argue quite young. And I was in love with this 25-year-old woman who was a regular in the co-op. She was a regular customer. I actually met her when... <laughs> the first time I saw her, she was outside having a punch-up with another woman. She was a big, 
big girl. She was probably six. Blimey. Oh, well over six foot. A lot bigger than me. A lot taller than me. But I didn't care because I just... I was a bit obs- not obsessed with her. I was I was in love with her. I was I was in love with her. I fell in love with her. And someone say, "Yeah, you were seventeen. What do you know?" Well, I actually ended up in a relationship with her when I was twenty three. So that torch I had for her stayed with me for a long time. So and I did have a bit of a, f- a fling with her when I was seventeen. Very. Very meing, me, meager, as it were. But um, I used to visit her regularly from the age of seventeen. Cause she used to, like, she used to, she used to, bait, she took advantage of me basically, and got me to look after her kids so she could go out. And not took advantage because I, I was happy to do it because I was, oh, I was just waiting for her to come home because I just. I was like a little puppy dog following her around everywhere. I was really, I was besotted with her. I, really, I was, 100%. It's, it's just hard to ex- explain. And, and this is 1988. Around kind of, and even, so I met her then. I was still in contact with her and that the our little interaction happened when I was working in the the factory so I was I was 18 at this point yeah when that happened so um and I remember the next day just walking around with a smile on my face all day long it was the most wonderful experience I'd ever had because I'd spent time for me it was like romantic experience that's what I'm talking about okay kind of um without being vulgar it was just yeah bear in mind this is someone that I loved I was in love with her she wasn't in love with me because I was she just I think she saw me as well she saw me as a babysitter but she, I don't. She saw me. She didn't see me as a man. And she was twenty five, and she was. She was. Well, she was all woman, and I was not all man. At the time, I was still a kid, really. I was. I still am, kind of. But I was very, very immature back then. Hard to believe. <laughs> that I was ever immature. I know. And. I just remember going to work the next day. I'd had no sleep. I'd spent the night round hers. And I slept on the sofa and she was upstairs. And I went to... No, or I can't remember. No, I think I was living above the shop still. So I'd started my new job. And I was living above the shop because we hadn't been evicted just yet. Yeah, so I was... So I, just, I literally... I was round the corner. It was like five minute walk. And even though I hadn't had hardly any sleep, in fact, I probably didn't get any sleep, I felt amazing. It was, um, yeah, I'd only ever had any kind of experience with one other person. This was when I was just left school. And I had a girlfriend, but nothing really happened there. But this was the first, like, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I was so, like, smiling and just... I was lucky I didn't work at a funeral parlour, I guess. That would have been awkward. So I... Why am I talking about that? Oh yeah, that was a good summer. A good, you know, I've had weird experiences at laundrettes. I remember I, was, I went into a laundrette and there was this woman 
But my stuff was in the in the washing machine. Okay. And or I I, I timed I mistimed it by a couple of minutes. So okay, I, I'm not going to. It was busy, so I thought I'm not going to sit in here and just you know it's a hot day. I went back in and I found all my stuff, all my clothes, taken out of the washing machine and dumped on top of the washing machine in all the powder, the loose powder that was on the top of the washing machine. I lost my ah, oh. and I said, "Who was do that?" And some a woman said, oh, "It was me." Should you like? And I had to wash the stuff again. I had to rewash my clothes. That was, uh. but then I had a couple of weird experiences. I was just in there, and there was there was a lady in there. She was just empty in her tumble dryer, and I was empty in my tumble dryer. I just came in. I put a tumble dryer on for thirty minutes or something, and I went out. I know people can open it up and take your clothes if you want, but I knew no one was going to take my clothes. I've never had clothes worth stealing ever. And so I came back in, emptied, emptied the stuff. And this woman started talking to me. She said, uh, you right? I said, yeah. I said, she said, what are you doing now then? I said, what? She said, what, what are you doing now? I said, I'm going home. <laughs> Bye. I really didn't understand what was like, I wish, I, what? What are you doing now? She was really kind of getting close to me. Like, what are you doing now? Where are you going now? It's strange. So I just left. And then there was another time. The same laundrette. And at the time I was doing the massage course. So it was reflexology, massage, aromatherapy and Indian head massage it was a holistic therapy course one year long and I ended up pulling out of it after the first term because of illness and stuff but when I was doing it I was working part time in the evenings and at the weekends I, every minute of every day was taken up it was too much just too much for me and I was in there and I was talking to this female and we ended up me giving her a foot massage without her socks on her leaning so there was a bench her sort of leaning up against the washing machine and her feet are on my lap and I'm giving her a foot massage and then so we was in there for about an hour together, an hour and a half, you know, doing a washing, and then I said, see ya. I never saw her again. Now, if you, I don't know, if you let someone give you a foot massage in a laundrette, someone you've never met before, does it mean that you might like them? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I didn't know. And I didn't want to just ask. Because back then... That was when my my self esteem was not very high, to be honest. You know, if that had happened, and this was like two thousand and three. If that happened in nineteen, if that happened nineteen ninety three, that would have been a different. I'd have been, I'd at least asked her out. You know, what I mean, if I'd have got to, she's let me massage her feet, then I'm going to ask her for a date. Even if she says no, it's, you know, if it was the late nineties, I would have felt very more, much more confident because I was much more confident in the late nineties than I was in the early nineties. But in two thousand, two thousand three, not not so much, not so much. But is it was because I was really doing because I was doing the pain relief stuff and and you know really kind of working on that as well uh, even though I couldn't get any people to come along to me or for me to come along to them to their houses this is weird I suppose yes yeah, so, uh, 
I'd like to come into your house, please. Is that okay? I'm a complete stranger, and I'd like to help you, like, with a therapy. Like, yeah, no, you're right. Did you know? Just reminded me. I can't believe the the, the train of thought that's happening today. I've just been reminded. When I was a kid, and I'm talking 12, 13 time, I had a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. I really did, genuinely. I wanted to be, I don't know, I don't know if it's because of Del Boy or, um, although Del Boy was a dodgy character, a comedy character, but, um, but I wanted to, I wanted to have a business. I started multiple businesses that never got very far. I mean, I used to lend money for a while at school. Um, the first part was easy. Lending the money, that was easy. Collecting it, eh, not so much. Um, so I knocked that on the head. That didn't earn, That didn't turn very nice, so I stopped that. Um if you lend money, you have to be, well, you can't be nice, unfortunately. It's, it's pretty much impossible. You can't be nice to everyone. And, yeah, so it's not, wasn't my kind of thing. And then I tried to do a business cleaning cars. But my dad wasn't any, having any of that. He said, well, if you want to clean a car, clean my car and clean my van clean your mum's car and she's like after that I thought I don't want to clean any more cars and it was never done properly you know it's like oh you missed a bit I said why are you so fussy he said look look you've only cleaned half the car you know I don't expect you to clean the car that's also on the side of the road I said yeah but there's cars there going past he said what do you want me to actually drive the car to the end of the road, turn it around so that you can do the other side from the pavement. Yes, please. That's when I realised that not all questions are actual questions. They're not all needing answers. So, knock that on the head. And then, this time I thought, I've been looking after my little brother for ages now. Through the summer, in the evenings, you know. So I'm I'm an unpaid babysitter. If I was a kid, it's just what you do, and you've got, a, got no choice. But I thought, I should see if I can earn some money doing this. It's easy. Just sit there watching kids' programs. And that was at the same. It was at the right intellect for me as well at that time. So I put an advert. I think I even put an advert in the paper. And we got phone, we got phone calls at the house. Jason, it's for you. My dad used to say, "That's what our boy. That's what my dad used to sound like." Jason, have you done your homework yet? Have you finished cleaning that car yet? You need to clean. You need to. No, he didn't sound like that. He probably sounded like me. I think my dad does sound a bit like me. I think he does, but it's hard to tell. I can't remember. He does, I think. He speaks differently to me, but he's... Yeah. Anyway, I... So I did this business, started this business. I got leaflets printed, put them through people's doors. Babysitting service. Called this number. And I answered the phone. Said, hello. Babysitting service. Called this number. That's the name of the business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's silly that was really silly uh, so hello babysitting service call this number and they said is that babysitting <laughs> is that babysitting services call this number I said yes it is I can't continue with this this is just silly it's very really ridiculous and then they said um, okay I said how much how much do you charge and I think it was a little bit of a problem at the time. I think I've probably said, like, how much do you want to pay? 
and then it hung up so that didn't go well and then I thought okay and I, I did a little bit of research and I thought well an hour a, a pound an hour and so you know so I started telling people a pound an hour and I kept getting the same question who's the babysitter People are so fussy, they want to know everything, don't they? They want to know all the details. I mean, it's not like it's an important job, okay, maybe. But I said, well, I am. Now, at the time, I had, my voice probably hadn't broken at that time, so I was 12, 12 or whatever. So, hello. Yay, food to babysitting services. Uh, whatever it is, um, and they'd be like, "Oh, please call now," and then they'd be like, "So who who who's the babysitter?" I am. I'm the babysitter. I didn't talk like that. I'm just saying this. I'm trying to do a high pitched voice, but it's really not so well, so good. Um, and it says, so you're the babysitter. I said, yeah, when do you want me to come round? What's your address? I try and get them to sort of agree to do it. And they'd say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your name? That's where things went a little bit skiddy. A little bit, you know off key a bit da, da, da. I said well, it's, it's Jason now I wish I said Michelle if it's Michelle I'd have been fine but as soon as I said, said Jason but you're a boy I said yeah I am no no thanks nobody and I do I do repeat just for the for the real, you know, prominence of what I'm saying, nobody wanted a boy looking after their kids, and this was it would have been didn't matter that I was 12 years old; they were happy to have a girl. Did not want a boy, and I had quite a few telephone calls to the point where. I stopped answering and my parents would answer. They just said, hello, he's a boy. Goodbye. And that would be it. Um, unfortunately, my, my dad was an electrician and he, he lost quite a lot of business that way because he, he, <laughs> he was talking to his own customers. But, you know, a couple of other people said, they phoned up, said, boy, have you got a new baby? Oh, no. Why? Well, you just answered the phone. You said, it's a boy and hung up. Went, no, it's Jason's got another business adventure. He thought that people would want a boy looking after their kids. Who the hell would want a 12-year-old boy looking after their precious children? They would just, no. They'd say, so, John, are you coming out to the pub tonight? He said, yeah, sure. Who's, like, who's looking after little Philip? Oh, Jason is. <laughs> da da bum ba da bum it's it's true. I, I I would look after. It was okay for me to look after a little kid. And everywhere I went, if I got the job in the chip shop, some bloke started working there. How can you look after our kid while we go? We want to go out for a, a meal or you know something like that. Uh, got to take my wife to hospital. It's like some some excuse. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, fine. In an emergency, yeah, it's fine, but you know, if it's just, uh, it's weird. I don't, I didn't, I didn't want to be a babysitter as a career. That wasn't like, oh, this is gonna want to do forever. But you know what? I was good with kids. I'd looked after, or I'd had my little brother for, hmm, what? How old? He was eight. I was eight when he was born. So 9, 10, 11, 12. So he was four. Four years old when I was 12. So I'd had four years of being with him. Every day. 
and when I was like 12, 13, that's when, and I used to look after him and stuff, you know, during the summer holidays, and my stepmom started working, and then I was looking after him, you know, during the breaks, I'd get in there, in the evening, I'd get there, afternoon or whatever, after school, and look after him for an hour or whatever, before they got home, so yeah, I was looking after him. So I had a little bit of experience in that. I mean, so yeah, I don't know. So that business adventure didn't work. What other business? I was going to sell number plates. That didn't really work out. I'm trying to think what other businesses I had. I thought about writing a book. And I mentioned this earlier. I didn't even get to tell you about the book. The book stuff that I was going to do. I'll come back to that. It just reminded me. I've actually come all the way, circled all the way back. Yeah, it's, I, I like the idea of being my own boss. Now, I've talked about this before. There is, I, I don't know why, but I've started thinking about nice people that I've met. Like really, really lovely people that I've met in my life. The I've really respected. I'm probably the most, not the most respectful. I've not been the most respectful person during my life. I don't, I've never really been too impressed with a lot of people. Um, but probably more than I realise, I give credit for. It's just, I just met so many wrongins <laughs> over the years. But, there was this particular man, and I met him when I was working in a chip shop. He was the carpet cleaner. He came in, I used to help him out, and part of my job in the chip shop, I'd go and I'd like help move the furniture around in the restaurant part so he could do that, you know. And it was it was actually a pleasure spending time with him. And occasionally I'd help him out. If he had a big job, I'd go and help him and he'd pay me and I'd help him and eat. And it got to the point where I'd help him do this place and then maybe there would be another shop he needed to do. So he'd, he'd like go and do that while this one was drying and, you know. And he was so lovely and he was a, a entrepreneur. He was doing other things as well. And I remember I went around his house in... Oh, it would have been half, probably 89. So it was after I'd finished working at a chip shop. Went around his house. It might be 90, even, 1990. And I was in his garden, and I really liked him. I didn't see him all the time, but I just used to go and visit him. He lived near where my nan lived. And we was in the garden, and he was just, we were, I don't know what we were looking at. I think there's fields and stuff. And he said, oh, I'm moving away. I said, what? He said, yeah, my my wife's mum is unwell. And we're moving to wherever it was, another part of the country, to look after her. So there was, I don't know if they owned the house or they were renting. I've got no idea. But he said, yeah, we're moving, moving soon. And I hadn't had a lot of contact with him recently but I'd saw him you know I'd see him every now and then but because I'd I'd left the chip shop I didn't see him regularly um I wish I kind of just went and worked for him you know even if it, even if there was enough I did ask him for a job but he was he didn't have enough work but it would have I'd have been better off working for him for practically nothing until the business built up to be a more popular, you know, I mean, to, to the point where I could get some good money because he's one of these people and I, I hope he's still around. I hope he's had a, a brilliant life. It's a long time ago that I knew him. I can't even tell you what his name was or what name is. He's one of these people that contribute, you know, that adds something. You meet them, they add something to your life, something positive. And that's what he 
did with me. And he's not the only person, there's been a few. I'll maybe make a podcast one day talking about um, all the people that have actually made a difference. But I can't, it's hard to remember everyone. And there's there are different people. I mean, until today, I'd forgotten about the... Not forever forgotten. I mean, I've thought about it in the past. Because it happened in the past, I suppose. But the babysitting service that I had... I mean, I had... In 89, I had a... Blimey. Wow. When I was in the chip shop... So we're talking 87... 87... 86... 87... In 1987, I was trying to sell jewellery. Or it might have been the beginning of 1988. I was trying to sell people jewellery. So I came up to London. I managed to get some money together. A little bit of money, not a lot. I don't know if I borrowed money or I sold everything I had. Got some really, really cheap jewellery. It wasn't a horrible jewellery. It was a cat Kevin... Um, hat and garden wasn't crap it was just the price that you would pay for it you know because when you buy it from a shop the huge amount of money is put on top because they have to pay for the premises the rent the staff the tax all that stuff so something that might cost you a thousand pound in a shop in a jewellery shop probably costs them no more than maybe a couple of hundred, if that, when they bought it. Probably less, actually. But, you know, they've got to work out how many how many rings do they sell in a week or in a month or in a year, how much wages they've got to pay out, how much rent. I mean, even just the... Uh... Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's a lot of expenses. So I did that and... I sold a few bits, you know. I remember, this is weird, I remember coming back on the train from London, Liverpool Street. So I'd been to, is it Hatton Gardens? Bought the jewellery. It was just like a shop. You could go in and just buy wholesale stuff. And I, I probably didn't spend much. I maybe spent £20. So it wasn't a huge amount of stuff there. But, I was trying to sell it on the train coming back. I mean, that was completely not my... I'd never done anything like that in my life. Never, ever. But I was literally walking up to people on the train and sitting down and saying, I, I don't know if you're interested. They probably thought I'd stolen it or something, but I hadn't. You know, they were all... I don't even carry a carrier bag, so it probably didn't look very professional. Didn't sell anything. I'm not sure if I sold any of it. I think I must. I must have. I might have sold a few little bits and bobs, but I didn't. I wasn't successful. The only thing I ever sold, because I was trying to be a, I was trying to make a living, you know, earn a living, because the job wasn't paying me enough to live on. So I was using it as an opportunity to meeting the customers, trying to sell things to them. So one person told me that there was something for sale, one customer, and I'd say, okay. And then I'd try and sell it to another customer. Not not at the same, not at the same time, because that would be counterproductive, because they just could just talk to each other, couldn't they? And I'd, you know, add, try and make a little bit of money on, on the sale. And I don't think my boss at the time was impressed because I was spending more of my time doing that than actually working. I was still doing the job, but it was that was what I was interested in. And the biggest success I had was I bought a fridge freezer for £15. Advertised it in the local paper, which probably cost me about £5. And sold it for £45. So that was a good profit margin. 
bearing in mind I had seven, what was it? I had like seven pound a week to live on or 10 pound a week to live on from the job. So it was like, wow, this is going good. And so yeah, that, I was so pleased with that. I remember the bloke saying to me, it's not stolen, is it? I said, ask no questions, tell no lies. He said, no, but seriously, it's not stolen. I said, no, no, it's fine. He said, why did you say, ask no questions, tell no lies, and tap your nose? I said, it's just something out of a TV movie thing. He said, yeah, but why did you do that? I said, it's just a, it was a joke. I was just pretending to be a, a, a dodgy, you know, like Arthur Daly type. He said, oh, you mean like Del Boy? I said, yeah, like Del Boy, only fools and horses. He said, oh, okay, fair enough, but... Girl boy did used to steal stuff and sell stolen goods, as did Arthur Daly. I said, I know, but I'm not trying to be like them. Just pretend to be, you know, characteristically. And he said, well, maybe you should develop your own personality. I said, I've got my own personality. He said, really? He said, yes. And that was it. He just said, okay, there you go. He gave me a check gave me a check and you know what people told me because I was so excited you know guess what I was telling everyone I sold I bought a fridge freezer for guess how much 15 pound guess how much I sold it for 45 pound I might not have said it like that but I was so proud of myself and they said oh how did you get paid how do they pay you? Have you you got the cash? Have you got you know you can pay me the money you owe me now? It's a silly thing I should have shouldn't have mentioned that. I said, oh no, no, no I might not. I, I said yes, and look at this, everyone. And I showed everyone a check, forty five pound of a check, and they laughed at me. They said it won't cash. It won't. You you put that in, it'll bounce. I said I don't think so, and I dropped it on the floor. See, it's just laying there. They said, no, bounce, bounce. You know what bounce means? I said, yes, I've owned a ball. I've owned it. He said, no, I was a kid. I didn't know what bounce, check and bounce meant. I didn't even have a, a checkbook at that time. I was 16, 17 or whatever, 16. And um, he said, no, it won't. It's not. The money, when you put that check and you go to cash it at the bank tomorrow, they won't give you any money. I said, why? I said, because they won't. I said, why? And someone said, well, you have to put it into your bank account and it probably takes five days anyway because it's 1987. I said, oh yeah, true. Remembering that. And especially if it was just a savers account because I didn't have a check account because I wasn't, I think I was old enough at that time to have one. And he said, like, no, it won't. It's just, but you know what? It did. It cashed. The money went in £45. I felt like I'd won the lottery. I say that because, I mean, I don't know what it's like to win the lottery or what it would actually feel like to win the lottery. But, you know, that £45 was, I think the right word is boon. It was much of a boon. I don't know what boon means, but it's a, like an uplifting good thing. It was a, definitely a boon. A boon. <sighs> anyway. Um, what was I going to say? You do 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 do. Oh, yeah. What was I going to... Just... Uh, there are a lot of Facebook watch out for this I'll tell you first of all watch out for these spiritual pictures people saying oh I can I can uh, if you pay me money I will draw a picture of your your perfect partner because I'm a clairvoyant me 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 I checked the pictures that they had these these were specimens of pictures and all artificial intelligence so there's a website you can check pictures 
and it tells you it's done by human or artificial intelligence. And then there is these people saying on Facebook posting, yeah, and uh, the brilliant, best thing I ever paid for is perfect. And there was two people standing together with a, holding a picture or just one person holding a picture, yeah, of their perfect person clicked on each of those Facebook pages it wasn't even the same person I was going to say they weren't even the same species but it you know it was a different different person on every single one of them wasn't the same person so you know it was just a different person it wasn't the same person that was in the image not I'm not talking about the the drawing I'm talking about the the photograph of them holding the drawing was not the people in whose profile they were posting dodgy proper proper dodgy so just in case you were wanting to get into that i would recommend no no there you go so what else um that's kind of it really I'll have to talk about my book another time. I want to get around to doing it. Yeah, I have to do that. So I've yeah, I started talking about that. I'll talk about that another time. But it's it's quite a long process. It's gonna take me I don't know how far I'm gonna get this year. It's gonna take me a long time to go through everything. But hopefully it'll be worth it. And I come out of it with something and maybe start to remember some stuff from the past that I didn't remember or I haven't thought about for quite a while. But the thing is, even though I'm not I'm not a celebrity or anything, so the chances of many people wanting to read my life story, it's just weird to think about like so much happens in a lifetime doesn't it in 50 odd years it's a long time to try and fit into a a book so I don't know we'll see so it's just like this is number 13 oh, just to give you an example of some of the this is an in-depth summary of the transcript from your podcast episode number 13 let me boy to sleep Recorded on the April the 11th, 2018. Introduction and self-reflection. Jason Newland begins with a light-hearted welcome, joking about not expecting to produce these episodes so frequently or become famous through them. Oh, blimey. That word again. He mentions his current discomfort with a pulled muscle in his neck and back. Ah, oh, don't remember that. Uh, he explains the podcast is designed for listeners to relax and drift into sleep, emphasising that listeners should only listen in a safe environment where they can close their eyes. Um, Newland, Newland again, recounts a comment on his YouTube channel from Beanie Town Vlogs who found this session useful for reducing anxiety jokingly states that he intended to increase anxiety but rec but recognises the interconnectedness of anxiety, stress, insomnia and chronic pain. What? <laughs> Rambling and musings. Reflects on his time in the Sea Cadets, which is something I spoke about recently, a youth organisation that prepares children for potential career in the Navy, shares his memories of the Sea Cadets, uh, shares that his memories are hazy and uninteresting but remembers the ranking system similar to the Navy laments briefly forgetting the point he intended to make routine and creativity this is number five highlights the importance of routine pointing out that chaotic lifestyles can lead to hardship in society I don't know what that was about reflects on how creativity in worry can lead to imagining Endless negative scenarios liken this to ability to Whitney Houston only singing in private. 
Okay. Um, some of that seemed to make sense, I think. Mental distractions and self-awareness. So it's like basically going through the whole thing. Um, and then what I can do is just...